everybody. Welcome to our live camp chat number three. This one we are going over specifically COVID at camp. So the long anticipated answers to your questions, hopefully um, in the next 20 minutes or so. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, our agenda for this session, we're first going to touch on masking because I'm sure that is what everyone um, is most interested about. We're going to talk about camper requirements and then uh, some recommendations we have for your campers as well as staff requirements. We'll then go over our check-in and check-out process and how that is related, related to COVID, our sanitization procedures at camp, our bunking procedures, and then we'll kind of go over some what-if scenarios related to exposures and symptomatic campers. All right, so masking. I'm sorry if I'm squinting. It's very sunny outside. Um, we'll be following the current GSCM and Maryland Department of Health guidelines, um, and that is that masks are optional in indoor and outdoor spaces. They are not required, um, but are totally optional and discrimination or bullying towards those who choose to wear masks at camp will not be tolerated um, and that falls under our zero tolerance bullying policy as well. Um, this of course is, is subject to change based on um, GSEM's changing guidelines, uh, Maryland Department of Health changing guidelines, CDC changing guidelines. Um, we're obviously monitoring new variants and the health of our community. Um, so we cannot guarantee that this will be the plan for the summer. However, this is wh where we are right now. Okay, camper requirements. So this is what we will require of your camper um, in order for them to attend camp. Um, we are not gonna make concessions to this. So please um, come prepared during check-in, make sure you have done all of these things. So your camper must have a negative PCR test within one to three days of coming to camp. So it can't be, they can't get the PCR test four days before they come to camp. It has to be in that one to three day window and we will be checking dates on the test. Um, I've included a link here. This is a, a really great map for Maryland that shows all the testing sites in the area. Um, you can browse by your specific county you can um, filter by free testing sites, walk-in testing sites, online appointment testing sites. So it's a really great uh, resource. The negative PCR test, the proof of that will need to be uploaded to campsite. And this is where you have done all your forms. Um, you obviously, it's not available to upload now. So if you go on there and look for a place to upload it, it's not gonna be there. Um, and then you can also bring it with you to check in. So if you, um, don't have enough time to upload it or you're having troubles, feel free to bring the copy of the test with you to check in um, and we'll um, check off that you have given us proof of a negative PCR test. Um, and then to be thorough, this has to be a PCR test. It cannot be a rapid test. It cannot be an at-home test. It cannot be any other type of test. It has to be a PCR test um, that you got from a testing facility, whether it be a pharmacy or a hospital testing facility or a doctor's office, um, but it has to be a PCR test. Um, we also are requiring that campers do self-screening or parent-assisted screening at home the 10, day pr 10 days prior to camp. Um, we, we're not gonna check that you're doing this in any way. We're not gonna require you to document it or turn it into us. Um, we're just putting our faith in you to um, do your due diligence and do this um, to ensure that your camper has not been exposed, is not symptomatic, um, and is in good health before coming to camp. We also ask that you are limiting exposures within reason. So um, obviously if your camper is going to a different summer camp or um, something like that, there's only so much you can do. But we ask that you're not, you know, going to a new amusement park every day the uh, 10 days prior to camp and that you're not exposing um, or the campers aren't exposing themselves unnecessarily. So um, if you can lay low for the week um, before camp, you know, your camper is going to need all the rest 
they can get anyways. Um, so it's a good idea to just kind of keep it within the family unit um, before they come to camp. That way we can limit potential exposures. If your camper is doing a day camp, um, so we have a week of day camp running at Conowingo and then a week of travel day camp at Camp Woodlands, um, those campers will be required to submit a daily screening through campsite. Um, again, that form is not up on campsite yet, so if you look, you won't find it. Um, but that will be a um, pretty straightforward form that you'll have to complete every morning before dropping your camper off at camp or the bus stop. So it has to be completed before you arrive. You cannot complete it in the parking lot. You cannot complete it while you're driving. It has to be done before you arrive. Um, that's one because it's not very helpful if your camper has already arrived to camp and we realize that they're not feeling well and they have a fever and they may have potentially exposed another camper. And then two, because um, neither of our camps have Wi-Fi in the parking lot. So there's really no way you can complete it once you've arrived. So please um, be diligent about completing that self-screening or that daily screening. Um, and that will just be a series of questions and then um, uh, temperature. If your camper is attending consecutive sessions, so say they're attending session four and five, or they're a CIT, so they're doing sessions one and two, um, we won't require that you get a second PCR test after the first session. Um, a rapid test is acceptable in this case. We understand that it would be very difficult to get your camper tested um, Friday evening when they get home and get the results back um, the Sunday that they are um, coming back to camp the next session. So a rapid test is acceptable in this case. Um, we also will have some rapid tests available at camp um, provided by the Maryland Department of Health. Um, so if you cannot acquire a rapid test um, or would rather us do the test, um, you can just bring your camper and we will do the test um, for you at camp. Camper recommendations. So these are not requirements. These are just things that we are recommending for the health and safety of your camper and all of the campers coming to camp. If applicable, um, we highly recommend that your camper has a full series vaccination and a booster. Full series would be two doses of Moderna, two doses of Pfizer, one dose of Johnson and Johnson, etc. Um, and then if they do have that vaccination, they can upload proof to campsite when we um, put that upload port up. It's not there yet. Um, and you may be wondering, why do I need to upload proof of vaccination if my camper needs to get the PCR test anyways? Because all campers, regardless of their vaccination status, have to get the PCR test. Well, reason to upload it um, would be so that we can see that your camper has a vaccination um, for a scenario that I'm going to go over in a little bit. So it'll make sense why you should upload it if they have the vaccination. Um, your camper should also consider self-quarantining the 10 days prior to camp. So not just doing the, the daily screenings, but also um, just quarantining themselves from um, large groups of friends and family, just sticking to the immediate family unit, um, not going out a lot of places, or if you do go out places, um, they can wear a mask, um, that kind of thing. Um, and that's just really to prevent us having um, an outbreak on camp. So kind of do your due diligence, what makes sense to you and your family. Also, campers can self-quarantine between sessions. This one I don't imagine being very hard because if campers are coming home from session one, um, they're probably exhausted and going to be sleeping most of the time on the weekend between session one and session two. Um, but this one is probably even more important than the 10 days prior to camp um, because we don't want to be spreading any illness between sessions. So not just COVID, but flu, strep, whatever it may be. Um, so we don't want to spread it to our friends at home, and then we also don't want to take stuff from our friends at home to the next session with us. And then if your camper is um, doing a travel camp, so if they're leaving camp for the day or a couple days to go to an amusement park or museum or um, Guppy Gulch or wherever it may be, um, 
I'd recommend they bring a couple masks with them just in case they go into a store or a museum or something that's still requiring masks or somewhere that they would feel more comfortable if they are wearing a mask. Um, so it's always good to have some backups just in case. Staff requirements. Um, all of our staff will be required to have a full vaccination series. Um, and then we highly, highly recommend that they get boosters before coming to camp. Um, if they have not received their booster yet, we are more than happy to help them set up um, an appointment to get their booster so that they are boosted and ready for camp. Um, staff will also be tested upon arrival to camp. So we will do rapid tests when they arrive um, and then 48 hours after they arrive um, to ensure they didn't bring anything with them. Um, if they if they do test positive, we'll obviously quarantine them um, or isolate them, whatever um, need arises. However, we don't see campers um, for 10 to 17 days, depending on when that staff member starts. So that kind of builds in a little quarantine period for just staff before campers arrive at camp. Um, so we kind of have time to build our own little COVID-free bubble. Um, they will also have, uh, staff will undergo weekly testing before camper arrival. So um, if a staff member leaves camp for the weekend, goes home, goes to the store, goes anywhere, they will have to be uh, tested on a Sunday morning before camper arrival. Um, and then we will also do spot testing when necessary. If someone is symptomatic, if someone's suspicious, if someone thinks they've been exposed, um, we will have a rapid test supply to do spot testing. Staff are also expected and um, required to limit exposures when off of camp. So if they're going somewhere that's crowded, um, where a lot of people are going to be on masks, unmasked, um, they're expected to wear their masks, they're expected to be careful and cautious um, and do their due diligence as well to make sure they're not bringing back anything with them after the weekend. Our check-in and check-out procedures are going to be very similar to last year. If you sent your camper to camp last year, we're going to do staggered check-in and check-out times again. This is to limit chance of exposure, but also just to limit the amount of people on camp and in the parking lot, since our parking lot is rather small. So a week or two prior to your camper session, you'll receive an email from me and it will give everyone their check-in and check-out time. So for example, it might say, Guppy Gulch, please arrive at this time, Wet, Wild and Cool, please arrive at this time, and so on and so on. If you're bringing siblings or friends or multiple campers to camp that are within different time blocks, we'll provide instructions for you as well, so don't worry about that. Um, and we, we really, really ask that you stick to your check-in and check-out time unless you have discussed it with me or a member of my admin staff um, because it makes it very hard for us to start activities and start the day when we're still waiting on one or two campers from that group. Uh, and it also, it, it's not good for your, your camper to be missing out on some activities that everyone else from their group is kind of like one step ahead. So you want them to kind of get there around the same time as everybody else in their group so they can join in. Um, we recommend that you wear masks during check-in and check-out. Um, obviously this is just recommended, it's not required, but since there are going to be more people on camp, especially people that aren't going to be staying there for the entire week, um, siblings, family members, parents, guardians, um, we do recommend that you wear masks just to limit exposure. Um, as soon as you arrive, we'll have people, staff members there directing you where to park, how to park, and then what to do from there. Um, we'll ask you that you stay in your car until a member of staff comes over and asks you to leave your car. So just stay parked in your car until someone comes and tells you otherwise. Um, from there, um, a member or two of staff will conduct a COVID screening and a life screening right there at your car. Um, so they will ask your campers some questions regarding how they're feeling today. They'll take their temperature um, and then they'll also do a head screening for lice. 
From there, um, your camper will be directed up to the top of the parking lot to drop off their luggage and then visit the check-in table. Um, there we'll collect any documentation that you haven't turned in, such as your um, negative PCR test. Um, and then a member of staff will check to make sure all of your other documentation is complete. So your pickup forms, um, your health forms, your med medical forms if you're bringing medicine, um, all that good stuff. Um, so be, um, be sure that you have completed all of those before you drop your camper off at camp. Otherwise, um, we're going to have to try to do it there and it's, you're going to have to wait and it's just a big, um, just causes a big backup in the line. So make sure you have um, all of your stuff turned into campsite before you arrive at camp. Um, if you have not, if your camper has not received their PCR result back in time, so we anticipate this happening. It happened last year. Um, and our solution will be that we will offer rapid tests on site. Our health center staff will conduct them um, for those who haven't received their PCR results back yet. We will still need the PCR results as soon as you get them. So we'll tell you where to email them. Um, and as soon as you get them, you will need to email them. If we haven't received them in a timely manner, we will ask that you come pick up your camper from camp. Um, the rapid test is just a in the meantime thing so that they don't miss out on all the starting activities. Um, but please, you will need to email the PCR results as soon as you can. Um, and then same as last year and um, um, other years before, parents and family members and whoever is dropping off the camper cannot go beyond the camp office. Um, so we like to keep everything beyond the camp office, a nice little bubble um, and really limit our exposures. So parents will say their goodbyes at the check-in area and then the campers will be taken down to the um, dining hall with their group and some counselors. Our sanitization procedures are um, very similar to last summer, so increased sanitization everywhere possible. High touch areas, doorknobs, light switches, um, handles will be sanitized multiple times daily. Shared equipment such as paddles, um, bows, arrows, uh, life vests will be sanitized after each use. Um, so each camper will have like an assigned paddle or an assigned bow, that kind of thing. And then after they are done with it, it will be sanitized before the next camper uses it. Um, campers have to use hand sanitizers before all meals. Um, and this isn't, we just put the hand sanitizer out and expect the campers to use it. We physically stand at the door of the dining hall and squirt hand sanitizer into each camper's hand before they can come in the dining hall. Um, if they were to have an allergy or anything to a certain hand sanitizer, um, just let us know and they can bring their own and use that instead of the one that we provide. And then in addition to hand sanitizer use, um, campers will be asked to wash their hands before and after activities, stop at the hand washing station and wash their hands, you know, after archery, before going to the pool and so on. Sorry, I had some visitors. Um, <laughs> And then on Friday, we will also do an all staff cleaning after campers have left. So we will wipe down and sanitize every surface that campers have touched, tables, counters, chairs, um, beds. We have foggers that will we'll spray the insides of the latrines and the port potties and the insides of cabins. So everything kind of gets wiped fresh for um, the weekend. As far as bunking goes, we are still doing smaller groups. We're not um, quite at full capacity in our um, bunks yet. Um, so for example, our teepees house eight and there will only be four to five girls in each teepee. So that way they have more room to spread out um, and not cross belongings. Um, and then they sleep with the same group all week. So they're not gonna be sleeping with different girls on different nights. Um, they kind of stay in their, their group. And then we're also, they will be sleeping head to toe or toe to toe. Um, and that's also to prevent um, lice outbreaks from happening as well as COVID exposures and just regular summer illnesses, flu and strep and colds and whatnot. Okay, I had to relocate. There were two girls having a water balloon fight behind me. Um, all right, so now let's go over all the what if scenarios. So if your camper starts exhibiting symptoms, and by symptoms I mean cough, 
sore throat, fever, chills, body aches, um, anything that may suggest that they have the flu, COVID, strep, a cold, um, and they're not feeling well and they've come to the health center. So if your camper is exhibiting symptoms, we will contact you as fast as we can. So we're probably gonna start a rapid test first, um, but then we will contact you and let you know what's going on. And then we're gonna keep updating you regularly as uh, things progress. So if their symptoms get worse, if their rapid test comes back one way or another, we're gonna keep you updated. Um, if symptoms are severe, we'll ask that you pick up your camper as soon as possible. So if the health center staff decides you know, this camper is really not feeling well. There's no way we can reintegrate them into their group um, if they have COVID or not. Um, they're gonna come ask that you pick your camper up because they need to go to the doctor um, or get some rest or whatever it may be. So like I said, the health center will begin by doing a rapid test. If your camper is positive, they will be isolated and required to mask until pickup. So at this point, you'd be asked to come pick up your camper as soon as humanly possible. Um, we'll isolate them um, in a building or um, in an outdoor area like under a, um, a tent or something um, and they will have to wear a mask until pickup. So I don't want it to seem like we're sending your camper to jail or anything. Um, we'll give them things to do, things to keep them occupied and we'll make sure they're supervised um, but we cannot reintegrate them back into their group at that time. Um, if your camper is negative, your camper will still be isolated and required to mask until it's getting very windy, um, until their second rapid test comes back negative. So we have to wait at least 24 hours before we do a second rapid test. Um, and if that one comes back negative, um, then we can, and their symptoms are very non-severe, they're feeling better at this point, we will consider reintegrating them back into their group. Um, obviously, we'll be in constant communication with you at this point. So if you are not comfortable um, with this and you'd rather take them home or take them to the doctor, obviously you are allowed to do that. Um, and again, this is for non-severe symptoms only. So if the camper at this point is feeling better, they had, maybe they took a Tylenol or a Benadryl and they had a nap. Um, and it just, it was, you know, it, it was probably just heat exhaustion or something. Um, so at this point, once our health center staff is feeling confident, we would cautiously reintegrate them. Um, if your camper is sent home um, and you think it was because of a faulty rapid test or um, it was it was just a cold and now they have meds and they're feeling much better you took them to the doctor it's all good um, they can return with proof of a negative pcr test and i understand it's going to take some time to get another pcr test and that might take a large chunk out of their week um, so we will try to reschedule your camper as best as we can for a later session however we cannot guarantee this based on just availability and capacity so we, we can't go over our capacities that are already set but we will do our best to um, find another session for them if they meet, if they miss a significant portion of their week. Okay, so what happens if your camper is exposed? So if your camper is in a group of someone who's symptomatic, um, or you find out later that when they were at grandma's the other day, um, they were potentially exposed to someone. Um, obviously, we will contact you immediately and update you regularly, same as before. Um, now here is where it, it breaks down between vaccinated and unvaccinated campers um, and where it benefits you to update, um, I'm sorry, upload their vaccination card on campsite. So if they're vaccinated, we will conduct a rapid test. If it is positive, unfortunately, they have to go home immediately. Um, and again, they can come back with a negative PCR. Um, if it is negative, then they can be reintegrated with our group um, because they have received a vaccination at this point um, and our health center, uh, if our health center feels confident that um, they are not at risk, they will be reintegrated with their group. Of course, this is all up to the discretion of our health center staff so that they are, if they are overly concerned for some reason or another, um, we, uh, we have to trust their judgment um, and 
um, do what they suggest, and obviously they will be in constant communication with you, talking through options as this is all happening. If your camper has been exposed but is not vaccinated, we'll start with a rapid test. Um, if it's positive, they'll be sent home immediately. If it's negative, they can be re reintegrated after a second negative rapid test comes back, which again has to be 24 plus hours from the first rapid test. Um, in some cases, our health center staff may recommend that you pull your camper from camp and take them to get a PCR test um, instead of them waiting around for the second ne negative rapid test to come back. Um, because during that waiting period between the first and second rapid test, they have to be isolated, they have to be masked, um, they cannot participate in camp activities with their group. They will obviously be supervised and safe, um, but we cannot reintegrate them until we get that second test back. Um, so it might be easier at that point to go get a PCR test and then come back. Um, but again, you'll be in constant communication with us at this point, and we will kind of walk you through um, what we think is best and help you find a place for testing if, um, if we think that's what's necessary. And then same as uh, for symptomatic campers, they can return with proof of a negative PCR test, and we'll try to reschedule if your camper misses a significant portion of the week. If your camper is in a group and the whole group has been exposed, which is likely if one camper is symptomatic, then technically that whole group has been exposed. Um, instead of sending everyone home, um, we'd obviously go through this procedure first um, of, of testing and making a decision based on vaccination status. Um, but we would try to find a way to isolate that group within camp, um, but so that they could still participate in camp activities. Um, so whether that means um, they would not be eating outside, they would spend a little bit more time in their unit, um, they wouldn't go to the pool, but they would do slip and slide um, and would shower in a different facility. Um, so we'd find a way to separate them, but still allow them to continue their camp experience so that they don't miss out. Um, but um, as a just an overall note about symptoms um, and exposures, Really, it's all going to come down to the decision of our healthcare providers. Um, so they're the experts; they have the knowledge and the training. Um, so we have to trust in the decisions that they make and accept um, that they are doing it for the health of campers and staff. So, um, so some of these things, there might be weird scenarios that I can't quite answer. Um, what ifs and what thens that I, I can't quite um, address, but it will at, um, it would all come down to the discretion of our healthcare staff. And then one thing I did miss um, is when I was going over the check-in and check-out processes um, for bus campers, it's pretty much the same. I detailed this in the um, in the email about COVID, I have sent out to all parents. So if you want to read a little bit more about it, it's in there. Um, but for bus campers, same thing applies. Um, you can bring your proof of a negative PCR to the bus and the bus counselor will collect it. They'll collect all your documentation. They'll do a COVID screening there. Um, the only difference is that um, the bus stops it's smaller groups of people naturally um, so we won't be doing the staggered times um, and we won't require you to stay in your car but we ask that you socially distance um, and wait until the bus counselor kind of calls you up to be checked in um, so just practice smart distancing um, of course mask if that makes you feel more comfortable um, but i think that's all i have for our covid procedures um, again, I know this is not going to answer all the questions, but we are going to have the town hall meeting next Tuesday, the 19th, I believe it's the 19th, um, at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Um, the link for the Zoom chat is um, in the email that I sent out through campsite. Um, so you just click on the link, use the passcode to join the meeting. It'll start at 6 p.m. Um, next Tuesday and we will try to answer as many questions as we can and help you feel prepared for the summer. Um, I think that is all I have. Um, I look forward to seeing everyone at the town hall meeting on Tuesday.